Good day, students, and welcome to number three of the um, 2012 free response um, questions for um, the AP Calculus AB um, AP exam. Uh, in this uh, problem set, we're going to be looking at the fundamental theorem of calculus and connecting F, F prime and F double prime. So let's take a look at uh, question number 3A. Um, we're told to find the values of g2 and g of negative 2, okay? Um, we know that g of x is equal to the integral from 1 to x of f of t dt. So let's uh, start off by looking for um, g2. Uh, so what is g2? g2 is basically what you get when you input 2 uh, for x in this function, okay? So it's going to be the integral from 1 to 2 of f of t dt. All right. So how do we compute that with this um, uh, function right here? This is a graph of f and we know that the definite integral represents the area between the curve and the x-axis on the specified domain. All right. So we're looking for the area from 1 to 2. Um, so it's basically going to be a negative area since it's um, beneath the x-axis. -ax so we're going from 1 to 2. So we can see that we have a triangle, all right? Um, so we're going to be using geometry, elementary geometry, to figure this out. We know that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. In this case, the base is uh, equal to 1 from 1 to 2. And the height, to figure out the height, let's look at if we go 1, if we run 1, 2, we fall 1. Okay, so what's the slope of this line? The slope of this line is negative 1 over 2. Okay, the rise over the run. So you run 2 and you fall 1. Okay, so um, if this, if, you, if that's the um, slope of the line, now if you fall, if you fall by 1 unit when you run 2 for 2 units, then how many units will you fall if you run half of that? So this entire length right here is one. So using similar triangles, this is going to be one half. Okay, so the height of the triangle is one half. All right, so um, the area is simply going to be with using elementary geometry, negative since it's underneath the x-axis, one half. The base, which is um, the run, uh, and the height, we determined that to be one half. Okay? And then we multiply this out, you have negative one over four. So that's the um, area underneath the curve, between the curve and the x-axis from one to two. All right, the next one we have to find um, g of negative two. g of negative two is gonna be the integral from one to negative two of f of t dt. So let's reverse the order to uh, an increase in order. So that's going to give us negative, uh, negative 2 to 1 of f of t dt using the order property of integrals. Now, um, this expression basically means the area between the function on the x-axis from negative 2 all the way to 1. OK, so we're looking at, let me partition it out for you, area from here all the way to here. OK? So we see that is a combination of two geometric shapes. This area underneath here is a triangle, and then this area is a semicircle. All right, so we're going to use two formulas to ge from geometry to figure this out, OK? So this is going to become negative. The area of the triangle is 1 half base times height, so 1 half. The base, as you can see, is 1. And the height is uh, 3 units, OK? That plus. This is the area of a semicircle. Okay, so area of a circle is pi r squared, so we're going to have one half of pi times um, radius square. The radius is one, so one square. Another thing to note is that that semicircle is underneath the x-axis, so it has to have is going to be negative. All right, so we have a minus like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify that. If we simplify the expression, we're going to have um, distributing the negative, negative 3 over 2 plus pi over 2. Okay, 
So there goes the value of the second integral. All right, let's take a look at the B part. It says, uh, <clears throat> for each of g prime of negative 3 and g <clears throat> double prime of negative 3, uh, find the value or state that it does not exist. All right, so let's go ahead and figure those out. Uh, we're going to start with uh, g prime of uh, negative 3. So pro problem letter B. g prime <clears throat> of negative uh, 3. Now, um, let's find out what g prime of x is first. So, what is g prime of x? So, g prime of x is basically the derivative d dx of, of um, g of x. And we know what g of x is, right? g of x is that integral expression. So, we have the derivative of the integral from 1 to x of f of t dt. Now, what's the relationship between derivative and an integral? You know that they're, they're the inverse operations, right? So using FTC part um, part one, this derivative right here is simply going to be what you get when you plug in this function into this variable, and then when you differentiate it, um, when you differentiate the antiderivative, you end up with a function. You just have f of x. When you plug in the bottom here, you're going to have a constant function, and when you differentiate it, it's going to become zero. Okay? So this basically tells us that. Um, g prime of x is equal to f of x okay so if g prime of x is equal to f of x that implies that g prime of negative 3 is simply f of negative 3 so we're just going to um, plug in negative 3 into our function and um, see what our output uh, is is going to be okay all right so what is um, the output when you plug in negative 3 into your function well, all you have to do is look at um, the line right here and determine what the slope is, okay? So let's see if we can figure out what the slope of this line is, the line that contains um, the line that contains negative 3. So if you're going from 4 to this point, that's a run of 2, and then you rise how many? 2. So the, rise, the slope is basically 1, all right? So if this, if you're starting from 4, negative 4, 1, and then you run 1, guess what? You're going to run in the same in the proportional amount. You're going to rise 1, 2, since the slope is 1. Okay? So this point here is going to be 3 for the x-axis, and this is negative 4. I'm sorry, this is negative 3, comma. And then if you rise 1 from 1, it's going to be negative 3, comma, 2. So when you plug in negative 3 into the function, your output is simply going to be positive 2. Okay, all right. Now we have to find a uh, g double prime of um, x. So since g prime of x is equal to f of x, what does that tell us? It tells us that g double prime of x is simply going to be f prime of x. What does this mean? This means the slope of a tangent line at any point on the function. Okay, so g double prime of negative 3 is going to be f prime of negative 3, basically the slope of the tangent line at negative 3. All right, so let's take a look at the function. So we already talked about this. This is a straight line, so the slope at every point in this interval is going to be the same or it's constant. Uh, so the slope of this line is basically the slope that would come calculated here, the rise of a run, and the rise of a run at this point is 1, because you you know it is, you go over 2 and up 2, so since the steepness of this line is um, 1, uh, f prime of negative 3, which is the second derivative of g, is simply 1, okay? So those are the two um, answers. All right, let's look at the C part. Um, we asked to find, scroll up so we can read the question, find the x-coordinates of each point at which the graph of G has a horizontal tangent line. For each of these points, determine whether G has a relative mean, relative max, or neither a minimum or maximum of the points. Justify the answers. All right, so um, we know that uh, we have a horizontal tangent line 
for g when its derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so let's write that down. Uh, we have a horizontal tangent. We have a horizontal tangent line. Horizontal tangent line when the slope of the tangent line, which is given by uh, g prime of x is equal to zero. But we computed early in part b that g prime of x was the derivative of that integral of f, which gave us the f of x. So when this is equal to zero, we have a horizontal tangent line. All right, so where do we have f of x equals zero? We have f of x equals zero at negative one and positive one. All right, so let's write this down on the graph of g has um, horizontal tangent lines, horizontal tangent lines at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. Okay? All right. But we are asked to classify the extrema, so to speak. These are basically the critical points. So which of them qualify as an extrema, max or min. So if you look at this situation right here, f changes from positive to negative, and then here it changes, it's basically negative and negative, so there's no change here. So uh, what's happening at the two points where it has a horizontal tangent line? So at x equals negative 1, um, g prime of x, which is of course equal to f of x, changes from positive to negative. Okay, so if the, if the um, derivative changes from positive to negative, that implies that g would change from, changes from uh, increasing to decreasing. And that implies that um, g of x has either increasing and then decreasing. That means you're basically going to have a relative maximum at that point, a relative max at um, x equals 1, negative 1, sorry. All right, so that's the situation at x equals negative 1. However, at x equals 1, g prime of x, which is equal to f of x, does not change sign, does not change sign, sign, so um, what can we conclude? So g of x has neither, has neither, neither a relative max or mean, relative max or mean. at x equals uh, 1. Okay, so that's that. Now let's take a look at uh, the d part. Part d, um, let's see what it says. It says, um, for the entire domain, negative 4 to 3, find all x values for which the graph has a point of inflection. Explain your reasoning. So, <clears throat> we the graph of g has a point of inflection when uh, the concavity changes. Okay, so um, let's see, g of x has a point of inflection when g double prime of x, remember we already computed what g double prime of x is, since g prime of x is f of x, g double prime of x is equal to f prime of x. Uh, changes, changes sign. Okay, any value where it changes sign from positive to negative or negative to positive, you have a, a point of inflection. All right. So the question is, when does the slope of this function change sign? Because this is f, and f prime is basically the slope at every point. All right. So let's look at the steepness of the line here. Um, on this interval, this, we know that this is the slope is going to be positive m is positive in this interval from here all the way to there m is going to be negative 
and if on this interval the slope is positive and on this interval the slope is negative so we let's see where does the slope change change um sign so the, the slope changes sign at negative two it stays negative all the way to zero changes sign at zero and then increases and then changes sign at one okay wait a minute um if you take a look at the interval around one um <coughs> Okay, I'm looking at the wrong thing. So yeah, change sign at change sign at one also. Okay, cause this, cause the slope here is positive, negative, positive, negative. All right. So since the second derivative changes sign um, at negative two, zero, and one, then those are points of inflection. Okay. So let's go ahead and write it down. Since um, g double prime of x. Uh, which is equal to f prime of x, the slope of the tangent line at any point, changes sign at x equals negative 2, x equals 0, and x equals 1. Um, g of x has points of inflection. Of inflection at those values. Inflection at those values all right so that's that